In this morning's text from the 12th chapter of the book of 1 Corinthians, Paul moves into one of the most well-known, memorable, and effective metaphors of Christian community, the image of the body. The scripture text is most often used to describe the diversity of our spiritual gifts. Just as there are many body parts, such as the ear, the eye, the head, and the foot, each of them with their own special ability, so too members of the Christian community have been blessed with many different gifts and abilities. Paul goes on to list some of them. The gift of healing, of teaching, of leading, and several others. And as I look around this sanctuary this morning, I can confirm that we are truly a body of people with a variety of gifts, some of them unique and some shared with others, all of them incredibly important to our community as a whole. But if this is the only nugget of spiritual truth we take from the text, I believe that we're missing out. If we see this portion of Paul's letter to the Corinthian church as nothing more than a celebration of our diversity, then we are only looking at one side of the coin because indeed there is a flip side. The paradox of a community of faith is that although we have many different gifts and abilities, we are still all members of one body. We are connected you and I. Some people try to ignore that fact. They would rather not be reminded that we are connected to some others. But ignoring the fact or operating out of a state of denial won't make it less so. Paul said that each of us can be compared to different members of the body. So imagine the body walking across a piece of ground that is littered with debris and the foot suffers a cut as a result. The first thing that occurs is that other members of the body are affected by the cut on the foot. The mouth might let out an exclamation of surprise. Tears of pain might leak from the eyes and in favoring the foot, the leg of the opposite foot may find itself having to carry more than its share of the load of walking and so forth. But another thing that happens is each of the members pitch in to help out the foot that has been cut. The body doesn't ignore the cut. It doesn't say, oh, it's really a shame that the foot has got cut, but I'm not a doctor, so I can't do anything about it. To ignore the cut would be to risk infection and even worse problems on down the road. No, the body stops and tends to the foot. It sits on a nearby rock, or maybe it makes its way to a chair, and the injured foot is rested upon the knee of the opposite foot. The eyes perform an inspection of the damage. The hands clean the foot and bandage it. The body instinctively pulls together to help out the foot because the very last thing that any of the body parts could imagine would be the loss or permanent injury of the foot. All the body parts are working together to save the foot. Although Paul was writing to a specific cluster of people, members of the Corinthian church, his metaphor extends to a much larger group of people. It goes beyond an individual church, beyond even a particular denomination or religion. Paul's metaphor applies to the entire body of humanity which inhabits our planet Earth. And we might try to ignore the fact that we are all connected, but that does not change the truth at all. And when one part of the body suffers, we all suffer. 
and we cannot afford to ignore the suffering of any member of our body or else it will come back to haunt us. One member of our body is in danger of being amputated, cut out and cut off as if it were an unwanted tumor. It all began when three members of the religious right visited Uganda and whipped up the emotions of the country's leadership into a frenzy against gays and lesbians. For three days, According to participants and audio recordings, thousands of Ugandans, including police officers, teachers, and national politicians, listened raptly to the Americans who were presented as experts on homosexuality. The visitors discussed how to make gay people straight, how gay men often sodomize teenage boys, and how the gay movement is an evil institution whose goal is to defeat the marriage-based society and replace it with a culture of sexual promiscuity." End quote. One month after the conference, a previously unknown Ugandan politician who boasts of having evangelical friends in the American government introduced the anti-homosexuality bill of 2009, which threatens to hang homosexuals. Human rights advocates in Uganda say the visit by the three Americans helped set in motion what could be a very dangerous cycle. Gay Ugandans already describe a world of beatings blackmail, death threats like die sodomite scrawled on their homes, constant harassment, and even so-called correctional rape. <coughs> now we really have to go under undercover, said Stash Mugisha, a gay rights activist, who said she was pinned down in a guava orchard and raped by a farmhand who wanted to cure her of her attraction to girls. She said that she was impregnated and infected with HIV, but that her grandmother's reaction was simply, you are too stubborn. Ugandan members of our society, our body of humanity, a body which you and I share, have been threatened with extinction. Several weeks ago, I sent out an email asking you to click onto a website which would send an email to your legislator demanding that something be done. And fortunately, because of the worldwide outcry against the law, countries have been putting pressure on the Ugandan government to rescind the law. 